Welcome back to the course on uh, computer networks and internet protocols. Uh, so, till uh, the last class, uh, we have looked into the detailed uh, design of uh, IP routing mechanism and the structure of IP router. Now, we will go to a little advanced topic which we call as the software defined networking. So, this uh, concept of software defined networking is an um, recent and upcoming standard and uh, all the traditional routers are uh, expected to be replaced by HDN enabled router. Uh, so, we will briefly discuss about uh, what is HDN, uh, what is the utility of HDN, how HDN differs from a traditional router architecture that we have discussed earlier and uh, then we will look into certain topics in HDN that how we can program a router with the concept of HDN technology and how we are gradually migrating from a, a traditional distributed route router architecture to the uh, HDN supported router architecture. Uh, so, the concept of HDN is something like this, uh, a software defined networking architecture, it is a network framework uh, which involves in separating a network control function from its data forwarding function and centralizing its intelligence and abstracting its underlying architecture from applications and service. So, that is a kind of formal definition of a, a software defined networking. Now, the broad keywords inside these definitions are as follows. First of all, we are trying to separate out the control functionalities and the data functionalities inside a router. What is mean by separating out the control functionalities and data functionalities? So, in the last few lectures we have seen that well inside a router you have two different levels of abstraction. You have the control plane which is implemented as a part of the software uh, which implements the uh, routing functionalities and the construction of the uh, routing table and its management and we have our data functionalities. In the data functionalities your task is to forward a packet by looking into the destination IP field in the IP header and making a match uh, with the routing table, the local copy of the routing table inside the interface that is the forwarding information base and then forward the packet to the outgoing interface. Now, this control functionalities and the data functionalities traditionally they are implemented in a single router. Now, whenever you are implementing the control functionalities and the data functionalities in a single router, then the complexity of the control functionality becomes higher. Why it becomes here? Because now you have multiple routers with their control planes and those control planes need to coordinate with each other to generate the global routing table or to manage the global routing table. And this control need to be performed in a distributed way because of its architectural limitation or the way we have designed this traditional router architecture. And with this distributed control architecture, first of all, your routing protocol gets problematic as we have seen that both distance vector and the link state routings have significant limitation in terms of their scalability. Uh, distance vector routing cannot uh, get scalable because of this count to infinity problem, whereas the link state routing protocol that cannot get uh, scalable because of uh, it is uh, size of the link state packets or the size of the link state information that you need to maintain uh, if you implement it over a large network. So, because of such limitations, uh, we have restricted this link state routing and the distance vector routing within a local internet or within a subnet and from network to network we have this border gateway protocol which implements the policy. Now, this make difficult for the network managers because if there is a policy change, then you need to update every individual router and all the routing protocols in all the routers control plane, they need to get um, coordinated with each other to make an policy update at the individual routers. And obviously, in a distributed architecture, it will take time and because of this time requirement, there can be inconsistencies across the routers and these inconsistencies can get significant in a large network. So, that is why managing a router 
managing a subnet with some say 1000 routers is a very difficult task and you are deploying these routers um, not in a single day gradually you are expanding your network and you do not know that what was the configuration of the uh, earlier routers and you need to make a match of the configuration from these two different routers. Then comes of the compatibility among the vendors, it is not like that all the routers of an organization they will come from Cisco or even if they come from Cisco they will have the same model uh, as you make a gradual deployment the routers may come from different vendors, the routers may have uh, different models, their configuration options may be different. If you just look into the uh, Cisco IOS manual, you will see that it is a uh, some uh, 5000 page document. So, the, the management functionalities are very complex and with this distributed architecture, maintaining consistency across the configuration of the routers at the control planes at different level, they, that become dif difficult and that is why we gradually try to move from a distributed control plane architecture to a centralized control plane architecture and that is the basic motivation behind the design of a software defined networking concept. So, let us uh, go to a little details about uh, this uh, SDN abstraction. Here the idea is that you separate out all these control planes from the routers and make a centralized control plane. So, you take out the brains from the router. So, this control planes you can say that it work like a brain of the router because uh, it makes the decisions and uh, the TCAM hardware just making a forwarding processing. So, you are taking these brains out of these individual routers and putting a centralized putting the brains in a centralized place which is your entire route controller. So, um, as we have looked earlier that the control plane and the data plane, the control plane is the module which takes all the decisions, basically it is an instructor, the routing algorithm is implemented in the control plane and the data plane is the module which carries out the task given by the control plane, the forwarding of the packets. Now, the traditional networking dev devices, they are proprietary, uh, the vendors they decide the software and the hardware. Uh, both the control plane and the data plane and there is no such standardization that uh, there should be this kind of match. Every vendor apply their own optimization and uh, because of that uh, it is very difficult to purchase a hardware from Cisco and then take another operating system and load it on a Cisco router. Although there are certain routers uh, which can support open source uh, uh, network iOS or uh, router OS. Uh, but uh, they also have their own uh, restrictions in terms of performance and uh, manageability. Uh, but the, for the commercial routers in general the hardware and the software both comes from the same vendor uh, and it is difficult for interoperability, managing interoperability, interoperability is possible but managing interoperability among uh, products from different vendors is uh, kind of difficult thing in a large network. So, the idea is to separating out the control plane and the data plane. So, the idea is that the vendor will only provide the hardware that is the data plane and we decide the control plane by writing the custom logic that is the software. So, the control plane will be decided by the application designer or the network manager or um, the network support team. Uh, whereas, the data plane will only come from the vendors. So, now, now the vendors they will just deliver a dump switch, it just have the TCAM, just has the TCAM hardware along with the forwarding engine, the control logic is not there, we will implement our control logic ourselves. So, the vendors will only provide the hardware and we will decide the control plane by writing custom logic. The advantage is that first of all the features are no longer limited to what the vendor provides. You can always write your own network application as a part of the controller. For the community development uh, in a open source movement people can come together and design a new network protocol and implement it uh, on a uh, control plane itself and you do not require the vendor support for that and it obviously increases the product lifetime. 
So, here is a brief idea about how does STN work. So, compared to the traditional network, a software defined network has two type of devices, the controller which is the brain of the network and the switches that is the hardware devices, they are kind of dumb switches, they, they do not have any logic in built inside them. So, the switches in STN are kind of blind switches, so you, they do not has any built in features and that need to be instructed by the controller. So, the switches, so here is an example of an STN switch, um, a Zodiac FX switch which is a tiny STN switch, it has four interfaces and a, a TCAM hardware. So, this is the TCAM hardware and this is the microcontroller, microcontroller for the switch. So, it just comes with this much of hardware and whatever routing logic that would be there that will be instructed by the controller itself and the controller can comes from different uh, open source standard. For STN we have this uh, protocol called OpenFlow. OpenFlow is a uh, uh, open source standard for uh, making controller to switch communication and based on this OpenFlow standard there are multiple open source controller which are available. There is controller like Ryu and uh, many others uh, STN controller like the old controller was something called POX which is a Python based controller, then NOX. So, this kind of uh, controller are there, uh, open daylight, the, I can name a few other controllers. So, there are different such open source controller, whatever controller you prefer, you can use it in a standard computer. Now, this entire brain can be put on a standard computer, you do not require specialized hardware for that because route processor is nothing but a uh, general purpose processor. So, that is why you can put this entire control logic on a single computer. So, you can install this controller, one of the controller, Ryu, Pox, Nox, Open Daylight, anything, whatever you, is your personal choice. Uh, you can install it uh, on a personal computer and from that personal computer you can uh, make the things communicate with each other. So, this is the architecture, the con we have a controller which is nothing but a uh, computer, general purpose computer that works like the brain of the entire network and then we can have multiple switches. These switches are the kind of dumb policies, the controller actually decide and teaches the switches how to forward a packet and then you can have multiple host. Now, let us, uh, so this is a very simplified architecture, I am trying to explain you the basic concept with this uh, simplified architecture. So, let us look into an example that uh, how the entire thing works in an STN environment. Uh, so, in a traditional networking environment, you do not have this uh, controller. So, you only have uh, this uh, switch uh, and the host and the switch has this entire routing logic. Now, here the routing logic is taken out from the switch and it is put to a controller. Now, note that uh, you can have multiple switches which are connected to this controller. Indeed, um, all the switches in a organization they can be connected to a single controller. The controller will actually uh, perform this um, routing logic in a centralized way that way we are actually avoiding the problems associated with a distributed routing logic and we are also reducing the overhead which comes from the distributed routing protocols and we are putting this entire information in a uh, controller which will dynamically teach the switches about how to forward the packet. So, let us look into the example. Uh, so, you want to forward a packet from H1 to H3, your source is H1 and the destination is H3. So, the host forwards the packet to switch S1. Now, whenever the packet comes to switch S1, initially the switch does not have any information. Uh, it just have a TCAM hardware and a, a switch fabric. Uh, so, it does not know how to forward the packet. So, what the switch does? The switch sent an packet in event to the controller. That means, the switch informs the controller that I have received the packet. Uh, with this packet in uh, message, it sends uh, the uh, packet uh, information, the packet metadata to the controller and then the controller actually decides that what to do with that packet and return back uh, the information to the switch with a packet out event. And till that time, 
the packet is buffered at uh, S1, buffered at the switch. Now, the controller sends the rule to the switch, then this rule is installed in the TCAM hardware of the switch. So, we will discuss the open flow protocol in details in the next class, during that time I will show you that um, how we actually write the rules and how a rule looks like and this rule is actually a very simple thing. The rule is just a kind of match action pair, right. So, a rule is nothing but you have a match data and an action data. So, the match data says that uh, say if your uh, destination IP is some um, 10.2 slash uh, 16, then you then your action is say uh, forward, uh, forward to say interface ETH0, forward it to interface ETH0. So, that can be a simple rule. So, this rule is now generated by the controller. So, earlier this rule was actually inside the routing table. Now, this rule is generated by the controller and then the controller actually sends this uh, to the switch and it is installed in the TCAM hardware of the switch. Now, the switch has this rule. So, once the switch has this rule, then the switch forwards the packet to H3. Now, the rule is already installed in the TCAM hardware of the switch. So, that is why for the subsequent packet, you do not require uh, to communicate with the controller. The communication with the controller is only required for one time. Uh, so, uh, you, you forward it uh, to S1 and then send it back to uh, H3 and uh, that is that is uh, uh, the rule which is being installed in S1 and for all the subsequent packet there would be a TCAM uh, heat uh, and uh, the cache heat. So, whenever there is a cache heat you directly forward it to H3. Now, this is this entire STN architecture and before going to the STN architecture, let me tell you the power of STN. Now, with the help of this uh, dynamic configuration, uh, you can actually support lots of new things along with the simple forwarding. So, now uh, with this uh, match action pair kind of rules, with this match action pair kind of rules, you can also implement a firewall. How will you implement a firewall? You can implement a firewall is something like this. Say if your destination IP is 172.16.20 slash 24, then you drop the packet. That can be a firewall rule, which you can always install uh, inside uh, S1, inside the switch, inside the TCAM hardware of the switch. So, that way you can design a wide class of rules. So, we will discuss in the next class the different uh, open flow supported rules which are there uh, in the open flow standard and you can actually support a large pool of such rules to implement different kind of network application at the controller. You can implement a firewall, you can implement a NAT, you can uh, implement a forwarding gateway, you can implement a packet gateway, even you can process because the controller is working at the application level, you can also process at the level of uh, virtual LAN or um, at, the, at the level of even at the transport layer. You can look into the port and based on the port, you can decide what to do. So, for example, if you just want to um, ensure that um, uh, you, you should not send any packet to port 80, so you can just write a rule like this, say if your port is equal to 80, then you drop the packet. Well, so you can, you can also write the rule in this way at the controller side. So, that way you can implement a wide class of network application at the controller and it is not limited only to forwarding or the routing behavior. So, ultimately most of the network functionalities you can map it to a forwarding behavior. So, you, you are deciding how to forward the packet or you are deciding whether at all to forward the packet or not. So, all these things can be handled by a single controller and that is having a centralized logic because it has a centralized logic. Managing this entire thing is very easy because nowadays now you do not require this distributed configuration of the control plane of individual routers just sitting on a single computer which has a controller software installed you can implement all these uh, network applications. So, this is the broad STN architecture. Uh, 
at the infrastructure layer you have the programmable switches the different programmable switches which are the dumb switches but they can be programmed dynamically then you have a network controller at the control layer and finally you are running you can run multiple application on top of uh, this network controller you can implement a firewall you can implement a custom forwarding engine you can implement a, a packet gateway whatever application you want to implement on top of uh, this controller so here is a difference between the traditional network and the stn so in case of a traditional network uh, you have the control plane and the data plane inside uh, every individual switches and this control plane they will talk with each other work in a distributed way and on top of that you have the network applications which are running and now uh, because these network applications say one network application is interacting with this uh, particular router another network application is simply, uh, interacting with this router so there can also be consistency problem and the configuration problem it may happen that this network application is having a conflict with another network application and deciding that conflict in a distributed architecture is very difficult but whenever we are moving to a centralized stn architecture or logically centralized archi architecture the data planes are distributed well they just implement the forwarding logic but the control plane is centralized and all the application are actually talking with a single control plane now what you can do the power of this is another power of STN that you can implement a compiler kind of software here or an interpreter or a compiler or a compiler inside um, inside uh, this control plane which will generate the rules from individual programs and then it will also check whether two rules are having a conflicting behavior with each other or not. So, that way you will be able to identify the conflicting rules or you will be able to also manually check whether the rule is actually conforming to the network policy which you want to uh, build uh, inside your network. So, that way this entire network management procedure becomes simplified and uh, it provides you a flexible and cost effective architecture to manage a large scale of network. So, that is uh, brief uh, introduction about uh, software defined networking concept uh, in the subsequent classes we will go to the little details about the software defined networking concept we will look into the open flow standard in detail so the open flow standard is a set of protocol or a set of messages which help you to communicate between a control controller a centralized controller and a, uh, and a router uh, or, or a STN switch in STN term we do not call it as a router because now the routing functionalities are not implemented inside the device we just call it as a STN switch. So, uh, or sometime it is called uh, uh, open switch. So, we, we just um, this open flow controller uh, it uh, designed a set of messages to interact between the controller and the, uh, and the um, uh, open flow switches or the STN switches. Uh, so, we look into the open flow protocol in details as well as we look into certain aspects of STN in uh, further details. So, thank you all for attending this class.